Being a good cinematographer takes years or even decades of work, but what can you do now to step up your cinematography? I want to turn this into a series of sorts, so once or twice a month I'll upload these shorter videos surrounding what you can do to make your cinematography better, but it will also include a few of the mistakes that I made when first starting out. I'll be going over my two favourite techniques that I use in camera and talk about why it helps to make the image look better. Keep in mind this video is for absolute beginners, but as new episodes come out I'll be moving towards more intermediate and advanced techniques. One of the mistakes I made when I was first starting out shooting was exposing for the room and not the window, especially so when the windows were such a huge part of the frames. I do want to just say that it is fine to overexpose, but it's doing it properly that is a challenge. If you have some sort of budget then you should be able to get some ND window film that you can place on the windows to not worry about overexposing and blowing up the image. I do want to give a quick example of the first film where the majority of the windows ended up being overblown, even though we did attempt to cover them up with the tarp outside and some sort of cotton sheet inside. I then didn't actually have a film that was shot during daytime for the next year or so, but I do have a couple of stills from clips where I applied the technique of exposing for the window and even though they aren't the best shots, they looked a hundred times better than my original attempt in the film, and these had no artificial light. I really do want to stress that it is fine to overexpose windows, but a quick way to make your cinematography look more appealing is to just expose for them, mainly because darker cinematography is definitely in style at the moment, but also because it helps create depth in the image, but I'll get to that later. As someone who does like to control window light and personally think that it does look better than overexposing, this was one of the biggest lessons for me when first starting out, and now I do it in pretty much every shot. This is another one of the major mistakes that I made when first starting out, but it's also a technique that I accidentally did in my first film. Firstly, I want to show a couple of clips, because when I was editing, I knew that one looked better than the other, but I didn't know particularly why until a couple of months later. So this first shot looks fine, but there's nothing really special about it, it doesn't tell a story, and it is extremely flat. We have a couple of layers, but apart from that, it's a pretty weak image. Later on in the film we have this shot where sure it's a different scene and some thought went into the lighting, but there's something else about it that I didn't realise made the shot, at least for me it did. The wheelbarrow here was just there on the day, but instead of moving it, someone just said to keep it as it looked better. I thought nothing of it, but now it's one of my favourite shots from the film, because it just made it more interesting to watch. What we did was create depth in the image. It was an accident, but it's something that I now try to incorporate into every one of my shots, if I can without disturbing the story. There are actually a number of ways that you can create depth in an image, from simply putting something in the foreground of the frame to shooting through a window or even a door frame. It's really up to you on how you want to create depth, but don't just do it for the sake of it, because ultimately cinematography is the art of telling a story through images, not creating pretty pictures. I think people confuse pretty with good cinematography. What was it Freddie Francis says? There was good cinematography and bad cinematography, and then there's the cinematography that's right for the movie. Ultimately, do what you think looks good. This is a job where it's all about trial and error, but if you did want a couple of pointers, then I hope this video helped. I hope you enjoyed this video on a couple of my cinematography cheat codes, I do want to turn this into a bit of a series so stay tuned for the next episode where I'll be looking at more intermediate techniques. If you found this video helpful, a like is appreciated and if you'd like to see more videos like this then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.